must be in the... Quick disclosure. I got this sword for free. Ronan Kadana sent it to me as part of their 10th anniversary giveaway. It was a thank you for breaking so many of their swords. No one asked me to do this review, but people have asked me about it, so fuck why not. Keep in mind that this is probably a factory second. I'm not 100% sure about that, but most of the pieces I'm sent from Ronan Katana are factory seconds, and that's what makes me think that, because history. You might think that sending free swords is a form of payment for doing reviews and could make a person bias, and if you're thinking that, well, you're probably fucking right. I try to keep my bias out of these reviews, but all you can do is take my word for it. Or don't. Make up your own damn mind. First up is the sword's overall look. It's cool as fucking hell, and it's more than loosely based on Michonne's katana from The Walking Dead. There's some color tweaks and the sword has a few different artistic choices, but overall you can tell where it gets its influence. Let's go to the looks. The sword's wrapped in a leather cover. It's not terribly tight, but it's cool looking. I don't imagine that the Edo on the Saya would make it easy to fit into your obi, but it's not exactly made for a dojo sword either, at least that's one man's humble opinion. The sword also came with a leather suspension system to wear around your shoulder if you want to be a ninja badass walking around in the woods. The downside is that there's not a lot of leather underneath. My sword has been hanging from the leather suspension system for several months now. It started to loosen and expose the wood underneath. The area near the Koiguchi has started to tear. The Koiguchi itself is even a little loose. As another side note, it fits really tight. The Habaki doesn't fit in the Saya all the way without a lot of oomph, if you know what I mean. That's not a bad thing. It means it will probably hold the sword right for quite a while. All the furniture on the sword is also simple blackened metal. I like it blackened, frankly. Not a lot of decoration other than the Suba. The Suba, the symbol of Michonne looking biohazard style Suba, and really the main tie to the theme of The Walking Dead, other than the other everything. It's a little thick, but frankly it's nothing crazy. The Ito is black cotton over black Samegawa. It's not very tight, but it's still very usable. It's also very comfortable and soft on the hands. It's supple and plush, like a nose tissue of some kind, but not full of snot. I didn't have any trouble gripping it, or keeping it gripped, or getting my hands clasped around it as though I was going to strangle no. Frankly, it was easy to hold, and edge alignment was simple. The blade itself also has more character than you might expect. Underneath that tungsten coating is a very pleasant hamon. Zombies will like the look of it as you cleave their heads in twain. The blade has also got a bit more sorry than the average sword on the market now. Sori is the curvature of the blade. It makes something that's a little different to look at, and it also affects the way the sword feels in the hand. The Ronin Kanji, imprinted on the blade in gold, is a nice little touch. I find it very pleasant. The new version, however, has some Kill Bill looking lion dog instead. I don't know which one I like better. Actually, I do know. I like this one, because I own it. Fuck yeah. In the hand, the blade feels pleasant, but stout. I thought the blade would feel lighter, but the sori makes it deceptively odd to handle. Not necessarily in a bad way, just something that I'm not personally accustomed to. It's easy to hold upright, but when it's in motion, it's a little hard to stop. Tip control, therefore, is not the easiest, but not abnormally so, especially not for a blade in this price range. I think that if you got used to it, it would be a very comfortable sword to operate. It cuts. That much should come as a surprise, considering it's a very long, sharpened piece of steel. I only cut water bottles, and the experience was frankly very pleasant. I did a little better with this sword than I do with most, and I didn't take it to any hard targets because, well, frankly because it's not time for this sword to die yet. I think it would work well against Tatami, but I didn't feel like it would really be effective against multiple harder targets. Ronin has a history of making pretty strong swords, and I've beat up other 1045 blades from them before that were supposed to be on the economical side of price. I have no doubt that this blade would likely impress, or would take more abuse than it's letting on. But in this case, I plan on using it for a guest sword, and I simply wanted to show you some of what it was capable of. Not that really cutting water bottles is any demonstration of what a sword is actually capable of. Imagine if it actually broke on a water bottle. How depressing would that be? Imagine if it broke on a zombie skull, that I suppose would be more depressing, but 
Not for very long, because you'd probably get eaten. In fairness. The end question is, is it worth it? These blades go for a little under $300. Is it worth $300? Well, if you want a sword that's black on black with some blacky black and made in a zombie apocalypse type theme and maybe looks a little bit more charismatic or cool as hell looking than the Michonne Katana from The Walking Dead, is subsequently also made from some type of steel which you could actually use to cut something as opposed to, say, 440S which would break, presumably, on targets that you might actually want to cut? Well, yeah. I mean, that's a lot of ifs, though, frankly. There are a lot of other swords, even from Ronin or other manufacturers, that are under $300 and probably are a little more practical from a practitioner standpoint or, frankly, a zombie killing standpoint. But few of them have the finesse and cool as shit lookingness as this sword. So if you want something that looks cool, want something that is capable of stabbing and killing and all of that kind of things as it relates to zombies, of course, then, well, fuck, I can't really see a problem with it. Happy zombie killing, everyone. Kudos and thanks for watching. It's something that makes it a little different and pleasant to look at, kind of like your scrotum. Eh, not like a scrotum. The blade feels pleasant, but stout, like potting soil thrown over your shoulder. In the hand, the blade feels pleasant, but stout, like a fat Oompa Loompa resting upon your shoulders, but betwixt your thighs as one throbbing, damn it. It cuts. That shouldn't come as any goddamn surprise. It's a sword with a razor-sharp edge. Fuck, what were you expecting? Water fall off flood dills. Which, coincidentally, if the zombie apocalypse actually happens, nobody's gonna be able to see it. I'd imagine that data would be down and you wouldn't be able to watch this, so... I don't know, maybe zombie preppers are watching it? That's quite a conundrum. It'd be kinda interesting if YouTube stayed up during the zombie apocalypse. Wouldn't necessarily be surprising, though. Google owns it, and they seem to have their shit together. I should buy stock in Google.